So I work with a lot of busy business people, a lot of executives that are always having to wine and dine clients or go out to business lunches and business dinners. And they're always asking me when it comes down to ketosis, what is the effect of drinking alcohol on ketosis in the body? Will it negatively impact ketosis? Will it positively impact ketosis? How does it affect the liver from metabolizing ketones in the first place? Well, I wanted to do this video to break down how ketosis and drinking are related and how we can really understand the process of metabolization when it comes to alcohol. So in order to do that, I have to give you the initial breakdown of how alcohol is digested in the body. And it's actually quite simple, so we don't need to overcomplicate it. When you consume alcohol, your body has a couple of different enzymes that convert it into something else. The first enzyme is alcohol dehydrogenase. The second enzyme is aldehyde dehydrogenase. And all these enzymes do is they break alcohol down into something that's known as acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is extremely, extremely, extremely toxic. Alcohol in and of itself isn't all that toxic. The body can actually really let it run through the body pretty easily. But these enzymes break it down into something that's very toxic. And it's toxic because it's broken down into small pieces that the liver needs to try to metabolize. Well, what that ultimately means is that the liver is always going to prioritize this toxic substance. Once the liver processes the alcohol into acetaldehyde, it converts it even further into something known as acetic acid. And acetic acid is totally harmless to the body. In fact, acetic acid is quite healthy. We have acetic acid in things like apple cider vinegar. And then from there, the acetic acid is broken down into water and carbon dioxide and is excreted. So it's a simple process. The body can actually relatively efficiently process alcohol. But there's some very important things that you need to know when it comes down to ketosis and alcohol. Because I'm going to make this very clear. Alcohol will disrupt your ketosis diet. However, only temporarily. So like I mentioned, once the liver is processing that acetaldehyde, it prioritizes it above all else. It's extremely toxic. So the liver says, okay, everything else goes on the back burner and I need to metabolize this acetaldehyde and get it out of the body. What does that mean happens to ketone production? Well, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that fatty acid oxidation and ketone production occurs in the liver. So when you're trying to get the benefits of ketosis by helping your fatty acids in the body convert into ketones so you can have energy and burn fat, well, that alcohol is stopping that, is disrupting it, it's stepping in front of it, it's cutting in line. So it's making it so that the liver cannot produce ketones for a short period of time. You see, when you look at ketosis in general, the whole idea is having a high level of free fatty acids in the bloodstream so that the liver can actively convert those into ketones. If you don't have free fatty acids in the bloodstream, you're never getting into ketosis and your body's breaking down muscle tissue and your body is really starving because it doesn't have the energy source. It has to get its energy from somewhere. That's why in ketosis, we try to eat such a high fat diet. We're trying to keep the fats mobilized all the time so that they can go through the liver and turn into ketones. So I'll make it very, very clear again, the alcohol steps in front of the ketone production. Now, that being said, alcohol just pauses the fat burning. It's not nearly as bad as having, say, carbohydrates. Okay? When you have carbohydrates, what's going to happen is you're actually restoring your liver glycogen levels. Now your body has to actually erase the damage from the carbohydrates and then ramp up fat burning again. Whereas alcohol just pauses it, carbohydrates allow you to take a step back. Okay? Not saying that alcohol and carbohydrates are in the same playing field when it comes to toxicity. Whole different worlds there. But when it comes down to fat metabolism, carbs are actually going to do a little bit more damage than alcohol. And this is coming from a guy that doesn't really drink. I'm just being totally honest with you. Alcohol is not as impactful long-term in ketosis as people may think. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice, and this might be a good thing depending on uh, how you look at it, is the fact that you're going to be a cheaper date. You're going to notice that you require a lot less alcohol to get drunk or to feel intoxicated at all. And it simply has to do with the fact that your liver glycogen is low. When your liver glycogen is high, meaning it has a lot of carbohydrates in it, that's one more thing that the alcohol can get absorbed in. When you don't have those carbohydrates, the alcohol goes straight into the liver processing and it gets you drunk really, really fast. It converts to acetaldehyde very, very fast. That alcohol dehydrogenase and the aldehyde dehydrogenase don't have any other amylase enzymes to compete with or anything like that. They're just going straight for the gusto and converting it to acetaldehyde. So that can be a good thing. But you'll also notice that you recover quite a bit faster. You get drunk quicker and then you bounce back a little bit quicker. But you also might notice that the hangovers are significantly worse because it's so much easier to get dehydrated. So let's cut to the chase really quick. What are the safe drinks? What should you avoid and what should you have? Well, 
first and foremost, you really want to avoid the beers. Plain and simple. If you're in ketosis, just 86 the beers. You don't need them. First of all, they're super high in carbs, they're super high in gluten, and extremely high in the phytoestrogens that are going to emulate estrogen in your body and make you soft and make you feel not so good. Okay, if you are going to drink, I highly recommend you go for the hard stuff and the triple distilled or quadruple distilled drinks. I'm talking about things like vodka, talking about tequila, and maybe some gin. Stay away from the brandy, stay away from the cognac, all that kind of stuff, simply because it has so many congeners in it, it's gonna put an extra taxation on your liver. Now, as far as the dilutants go, go with seltzer water, something like that, okay? So some triple distilled vodka with some seltzer water would be a perfect drink when you're in ketosis. And a lot of people ask about the wines. Well, believe it or not, red wine, sure, it has antioxidants in it, but I'll be honest with you, the antioxidant effect of red wine is so minimal, it's practically a joke. You're better off going for the lower carbohydrate content of a white wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc. A simple four ounce serving of Sauvignon Blanc only has about 2.7 grams of carbohydrates. So there you go, that might be the best choice for you. But all this being said, at the end of the day, you're putting a tax on your liver, okay? Your liver needs to operate efficiently. And if you're constantly taxing it with alcohol and acetaldehyde, you are long-term going to affect your ketosis results. So my word to the wise would be try to limit your drinking to one night a week and do it with the above listed drinks. So as always, if you have any ideas on future videos to make your ketosis life easier or make your intermittent fasting life easier, put them in the comment section below so that my team and I can see them so we can get you the best content ever. I'll see you in the next video.